So here we go. To tour or not to tour? <clears throat> Larry's budget for touring was at, uh, close to non-existent. Uh, and yet at the same time, being here all the time, he found ways to get enough money to tour year after year after year. And most of that was by doing a lot of religious programming in his music and singing at churches and asking for free will offerings. And you would have then the opportunities for the uh, good will people of the churches to help fund the Linfield College experience. And we're very appreciative of them for that. The other thing is in that touring, a lot of students had opportunities to build relationships with each other that have been meaningful for years and years and will be continue to be meaningful. And I think that sometimes we forget how getting a lot of people together in a tough situation with bus rides and cars and vans and over miles and miles and miles where they could either hate each other or love each other. The thing that's been exciting is most of the time they love each other, so. <clears throat> to recruit or not to recruit. Um, I think each faculty member in their own way has a, has a way of reaching out to the public. And Larry's way was being extremely active in judging around the state and in the region for uh, different types of <clears throat> vocal and choral uh, contests. And in that judging, met many, many conductors and met many, many students. And a lot of the music students at Linfield, I think, have come because they somehow or other, through their teacher or through having met and worked with him, found Linfield to be a place that they were interested in, and then coming here and seeing all of you people, how could they resist? <laughs> <laughs> to see Linfield as a calling, as opposed to a concern, or to see Linfield as a place where you have an opportunity to make a difference in a way that uh, you wouldn't have in a lot of places. Probably it's because the staffing is not so heavy that our differences can be made uh, more readily because we're the only ones to do it. <laughs> but but uh, that situation is so important that you see yourself here for a purpose. He could have used it as a step to get somewhere else. He chose to use it as a place to stay and to build something that he felt was very important. I think many of us are here. It may have been a step to try to get somewhere else, and we ended up being here and building something that we hope has a legacy to it. He also chose to provide students with a very meaningful experience. And that would be, for example, somebody who had a lot of abilities but did not have a lot of uh, opportunities to be at certain places or meet certain people. He would work hard to arrange those types of things so that students would get to know uh, or be placed in uh, a student teacher situation or be placed with faculty who could really help with the weaknesses of the students in ways that maybe our department was unable to provide the same kind of support for. So he's always aware of the students around him and those that especially that he felt like he could hook up with somebody else. And I think the last thing is that he chose always to live with the present, but look towards the future. And I think that he could accept the fact that when I would say, Larry, your budget for this year is this number of dollars, he had finally got to that point where he'd say, okay, and be nice, cheerful, okay, as opposed to a snarly okay. And then he would move on, and from that point on, it was, okay, how can I provide the very, very best results for the time uh, that I have and for the money that I have and how 
can I move these students along in their growth, and how can I also at the same time keep all of the public happy? It's still a question. Hey, thanks. <laughs>